Hi, uh, this is D.E. Nichols. I'm uh, working on a late model Chevy 2018 Equinox. And uh, here's some quick tips about how to look at the sensor data to get your best result. Okay? I love it, I love it. I've got a uh, late model 2018 Equinox. Already has about 60,000 miles on it. And uh, the front O2 up sensor was really rich. When I followed the sensor data, it would not oscillate between zero and a thousand millivolts. It would uh, hang out around 800, and then when I revved it, you would see it get stuck at like 1800 millivolts. But as soon as I replace this sucker, it's oscillating up and down, and this stays high voltage, just like it should be, because it's got a healthy catalytic converter. What was happening before is it would keep dumping more and more fuel in its mind trying to get this to move and yet this would be lean. It also had a code PO132 and then consequently during uh, testing a PO137 for high voltage, obviously because this was in the wrong range. If I had been a little bit more thorough I could have checked the heated side of the oxygen sensor as well but typically uh, oxygen sensors come in for either a heated oxygen sensor problem or a sensing problem, not both. They always seem to fall on just one side of it. Uh, you'd see if it did fall on the heater side, you could see changes here, like it might be like, whoa, I'm getting straight voltage. I'm getting the same voltage in as I get out. There's no resistance in between. It's shorted, short, shorting through. The circuit's complete without resistance. I better turn that off. That is not going to be good for me to run that heat through the PCM when it's not going to the oxygen sensor where the load should be. Looking at the fuel trims, prior to, they actually had quite a bit of short term fuel trim going on. And that was converting over to long term, which tells me the customer brought the car in right away to us, which is something we like to see. Now, this has settled down to about zero, but long term, when I hit on the gas, still goes a little rich. First time I played with it, everything rich on the long term counteracted on the short term. There might be a little relearning to do here, but all in all, I think this is a good fix. I almost forgot something else I did on this repair is uh, I test drove it with the upstream oxygen sensor almost out, like held on by a thread, because sometimes uh, you can get an oxygen sensor to act up. Sorry, you're gonna have to overhear the AC. It is way too hot of a day to leave that off for better sound quality. All right, so one of the things that you gotta do is figure, if you got a bad oxygen sensor, what's gonna go bad with it? Uh, a lot of times spark plugs go bad with it because uh, fuel trims have been run wrong for a while. Things have been run too rich or too lean. But I checked the spark plugs and they looked consistent for a well-running engine that's got its original spark plugs from 60,000 miles ago, so there was no reason to recommend replacing them early. I went ahead and replaced those, uh, put those spark plugs back in, even checked their gap. They were within standard gap, just a little wider than new ones, but still within standard gap. So I moved on with life. But as far as that catalytic converter test goes, see, if you have a melted down catalytic converter, it's going to uh, have too much resistance to let an engine run. It's not going to breathe out well, so to speak. So that's the reason why I like to put an oxygen sensor, just barely thread it in to test that. Problem is, this oxygen sensor was running so bad, I couldn't run that test. So I uh, had to go ahead and replace it and redo the test uh, to make sure there wasn't a catalytic converter issue. But there's something else. It drives so much better now. I mean, it's fixed. Uh, right, right about now on a, a Chevy uh, Camaro I was working on that I got tricked on, I thought, oh, the car's fixed. And sure enough, because I hadn't driven down far enough down the street, it started acting up on me. So I'm going to put it through a good um, test drive. But if what was happening before is it would randomly lose power, only occasionally, not very often. It really decided to act up when I uh, had the oxygen sensor in there loose for some reason. They complained about it running rough. It did sound like I had a miss. See, that can happen when you don't have the right amount of uh, air to fuel, that it just kind of, you know, things aren't quite right because things are getting measured wrong. Now, technically speaking, the math 
uh, the fuel injectors, the map, other sensors, temperatures, they all dictate the correct air fuel mixture. But the reason why it's so important to have a great oxygen sensor is because if your oxygen sensor is acting up, see, I'd be losing power right now, but it's smooth and, and good. But what's so important to have an oxygen sensor is if that oxygen sensor reports something different, hey, guys, upstream, you made this command, but I'm calling BS, you guys are wrong. The oxygen sensor is always followed. It always countermands all those other sensors and says, no, nope, we're running this way. So oxygen sensors are particularly important to be running right. Some of the upstream sensors, if they're a little off, uh, the oxygen sensor will still countermand that, hey, you thought this whole balance is going to be something like this, but it's not. It's actually like that. And uh, that, that's not quite so bad. I mean, that can interfere with performance because you have to have a reaction where, hey, this isn't quite right. But if that situation repeats, you'll get a long-term fuel trim in certain areas. And sometimes that long-term fuel trim won't make sense because all the oxygen sensor is seeing is the exhaust. It doesn't know which sensor is wrong upstream. It doesn't think about that. It just sees exhaust and says, hey, 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 <laughs> really fast at different millivolts. Uh, air fuel ratio sensor is pretty similar except even more lightning fast because it's so incredibly sensitive and it, and it can re re read into the minutia. And it also can read wider. That's why it's called also called a wideband sensor. But on this car, it's just regular oxygen sensors. In fact, upstream and downstream are identical. So that's a tip for you. You could, could actually swap the two and see if your car started running better. And uh, then you would know for sure that, hey, your upstream was bad. I don't recommend if your downstream is suspected bad by the computer to do a swap because, yeah, you just you, did, you don't want a for sure bad one thrown in the front. Uh, it's going to confuse your data. Um, I mean, I commented earlier that my upstream on the bad O2 sensor was saying very bad fuel mixture while downstream, or very rich, impossibly rich. The downstream sensor was saying very lean, steadily very lean which made me kind of think that catalytic converter wasn't a, as a concern, especially since the customer actually brought the car to us within 30 miles of the check engine light coming on. They didn't, they didn't dilly-dally, they came right in, and that's the smart thing to do when you have a check engine light because that's what uh, prevents uh, possibly sometimes serious damage. Some things could be wrong for a long time and not cause any issues, but some things do. So be sure to get it to your mechanic, or I'm a Huber Vester now, and... Uh, not sponsored video, just hit and record while I'm uh, doing the test drive real quick to make sure that this uh, car is going to go for the customer. And I have to say, it's gone through all the paces, all the things it complained about before the replacement is now good. So, there you go. Be sure to get out there and work on something. On my top left, which will be your top right, I've been having that mixed up the last couple of videos, will be the most related video. Probably on an oxygen sensor diag on a Twitter crawl and down here at the bottom is going to be the video that YouTube thinks you like best on my channel on any subject to level up your power and knowledge Godspeed get out there and work on something